This is Will Nunziata, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am absolutely thrilled and honored to be speaking with a multidisciplinary artist. She's an actor, an art director, a spiritual mentor and advisor, the one and only Mary M. Hello, Mary M. How are you? Hello. Thank you so much for the lovely intro. <laughs> hey, I'm from New York. I speak the truth. Now listen, Mary M. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I want people to after this interview, go to the links below because you do it all. You provide so many beautiful services through your beautiful art in everything that you do is art. I want to deep dive first into, into the art that you create. I'm curious to know where you get a lot of your ideas from when you are, you know, creating. Well, um, a lot of times, um, ideas just come through me. So I don't necessarily think about specific themes or ideas. Although sometimes um, I do decide to work on a theme, which the ideas could be, um, you know, anything around me can inspire me in my everyday, day-to-day -day life and, and my, my environment and everything that I experience um, can inspire me. But when I work, when I start working, um, it's more about creating the right environment for me to switch off and just allow that to be in a state of flow and just let go. And for that to come together sometimes requires a lot of setup, meaning that cleaning all the cupboards, uh, <laughs> deciding to microsort everything around me so I could get to that point. But sometimes I can, I can deal with my chaos and just, just allow myself to, to just... Um, the receive so it's sometimes feels like I'm I'm like a channel you're a vessel uh, I am a vessel like I think most artists see themselves that way and when you start working it feels like it's a collaboration it's not only me deciding what's happening and it's really fun it's a really exciting process and um, when I work I generally like to listen to something and sometimes and those things are usually lectures or interviews things are at around spiritual topics or thing or other um, but they need to be a bit engaging and um, so sometimes themes from those kind of um, end up in the work as well it's just, just and they act as and they act as prompts you know and I agree with you five thousand percent I mean while you're cleaning cupboards I can't have too many things on my walls only a few things but I like a blank canvas god bless my husband who's agreed that our apartment is mainly nothing on the walls because I like to wake up every day and feel like I'm on a clean slate. So I, I totally can relate. And on top of that too, it makes perfect sense that for you as an artist, as a storyteller, as a creator, as a spiritual Story advisor. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> well, I think that you're a storyteller within everything that you do, Miriam, because you are allowing yourself and giving yourself the permission to receive and I think it's a really good advice. I've spoken with over 1200 artists this past year all over the world who are coming on board this app. And if there's anything that they all can relate to, it's that this has been a time to be still, a time to really sit with oneself really? and to maybe reconnect with our childlike sensibility. I was telling you off camera, you have a very childlike sense of wonder I about you. Too. Where does that come from? Well, that's basically uh, my inner child. I think um, that uh, can, I, I'm re in recent years, I've been a lot more aware of what, where that childlike um, kind of part of me comes from. And I think we all have it. We all have that side. And we need to nourish that part of ourselves, which is, I think, where all the creativity comes from there. And, all the, and I think anything you do in life, if you have a bit of playfulness, you can definitely achieve better results and have less stress so yeah my inner child and she really loves to speak hello Will. Hello, oh. it's me. i'm little mayam i'm always here and i decide everything that's enough for her oh and my god i love little child like miriam <laughs> i have so many childlike voices that i use between my husband and i that if i were to do it on camera <laughs> do it do it hi miriam how are you i'm miriam nice to meet you will Nice to meet. And I'm gonna start taking on your accent and sound a little cockney. All I want is a room somewhere. Okay, Miriam, don't get me started. But I love your sense of play because it not only parlays in through your artwork, your acting, your modeling, where you need a sense of play to take on character. But talk to me a little bit about 
the spiritual advisement and the mentorship? Okay, so that was a really fun thing that I've always been interested in this world of psychics and, and me too. By the I way, just love it. I would love to have a conversation with you offline because I have been sure. told from people that I have an instinct in a channeling, like I've been able to read people without even thinking Excellent. I was doing it. Nourish it, nourish it. And, and, and you'd be surprised once you really allow that to um, take it, take space in your life, you'll be surprised. When did you cool. realize, Miriam, that you had this gift and then how did you okay. proceed to nourish it? <laughs> that was a really, really fun thing um, that happened to me. And it was quite a surprise. I was, um, because I perform as well, um and um kind of i was um doing this performance uh, just as an experiment and it was a space that i could basically a friend of mine was running a night that everybody could kind of experiment with different ideas and get feedback so i thought it was a perfect uh, opportunity for me to try a one-to-one -one experience a one-to-one -one performance and i thought um because the space had a section that looked like a cave i thought i'll be the oracle in the cave that'd be perfect and i just kind of took all these little bits and bits and pieces that i've got around me uh, in my space and i just kind of decorated it and i made a really fun comfortable space and people came and my initial thought was to 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 see what it's like to have that one-to-one -one connection and just see what comes up because i had no idea what was going to happen i just wanted to kind of create um a kind of an intimate vibe and the first person came, I held their hand and I kind of closed my eyes and I started seeing something but I didn't really understand what was going on. So I responded to what I was seeing in a kind of a very vague way. And then the next person, I also started seeing something and it had never happened to me. I mean, I was always kind of feeling a little bit of, as though I could feel that I could have psychic abilities or sometimes I could feel the intuition was, um, I could feel it stronger. Um, but I never really kind of specifically seen visions and this was happening for the first time and I was excited and I, and I started telling people what I saw and it made sense to them. So one person after the next and, and I just kept going and, and the more I did it on that evening, it just kind of became stronger. Even by the end of the evening, I was actually having a discussion with people about their personal life and they were opening up and telling me things and getting guidance and and it was so strange by the end of it, which was about maybe three, four hours. I kind of felt like, I think I'm onto something, but I couldn't accept it yet. I had to um, take a bit more time, try it out a bit more and, and kind of practice. And, and so I was doing it for my friends and family and they're all very keen and very interested and very supportive. So maybe about a year after that, I started having, um, accepting the fact that no, this is a, a genuine, um, um, skill, a gift that I've got. So I better nourish it and started working with clients and started very slow by just doing um, readings from photo, from images, and just kind of like do really mini readings. And they just started expanding from there. And uh, when 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 you work with clients, they just actually, you learn so much through work as well. And now it's developed into something now. I've been doing it for for about uh, five six years and oh it's gosh. it's kind of turned into a like a, a lot more of a solid structure but yeah. of course i would uh, adjust it to different clients and, and, and to their needs and uh I, and it is more like um it is pretty much a a counseling session in a way so by by looking deep into um and their journey and kind of and at the beginning i like to know nothing about them and and that it works better for me to kind of just just see what i can pick up and then they can open up and share and anything they need guidance about i can um and i tune into to spirit guys and and, and step by step i um it's been expanding and i've just been adding more layers to it so i can actually give um give it a give an advice that can be really helpful without telling people what to do just mm. more showing where they are Growing and not telling yeah not telling you this is what you've got to do so i'm trying to keep the ego my my own ego aside and kind of well, just give back, it guidance you know to you being a vessel a conduit and yeah. a messenger um miriam i could speak with you forever but what i've observed not only from our interview thus far but also my research of you. And again, I just want to let everyone know again, for more on the incredible Miriam, you can read more about her right below this video. Miriam, you have, 
you are obviously a person and an artist that has stepped into their power. And in a show don't tell way has, I think, given permission to a lot of people, but I'm also thinking of the young girls out there in the world. Absolutely. Who may not have that permission given to them from others. Yeah. And I don't know, this childlike sense of wonder of the possibility that you are spreading through your artwork, your spiritual guidance, your acting, your modeling, your performance, your storytelling, your creation. You're creating safe spaces in each of these different facets and disciplines for others, not only yourself, but for others. Yeah. And I find that very inspiring. It's very, it really, uh, it's kind of for me as well, because I get so much joy out of doing that. So there is a little bit of a selfish <laughs> part of me wanting to do that too, because it's really, um, it's really exciting for me to be able to share um, what I've learned in my own journey. And also um, just, just as you said, you put it really well, safe spaces so that people could just be themselves and, um, let go of worry and control and, and just just be. Um, I think there's so much um, pressure we have on in this in this world, in this modern world and it's and it's getting more, especially with the social media and how we're always being seen. And, and I think there is this um, uh, constant worry that uh, that we need to always show um, um, that we're perfect. <laughs> that, the that, filtered you know, version of ourselves. I have that too, you know. Like I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, um, immune <laughs> to that. But I think if we could find places that we're less worried about that, and we could just let um, our truth to be seen mm -hmm. first of all by ourselves, because we're sometimes very disconnected from what we really want and who we really are. And I think any opportunity that we could explore that is, is I think it's a, um, it's a, it's a good gift. I agree. I agree. Well, look at a time now to seep into our vulnerabilities, those imperfections that make us perfect. The fact that we have someone like you, Marianne, that allows for those safe spaces for people to do so is a beautiful thing. And listen, I'm so excited you're coming on board this new app where you're going to be connecting with thousands upon thousands and one day millions. I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Of people all to, over the to, world, To Mary. connect to more people and, you know, and share more and be inspired by all the other artists. And yeah, it's a very colorful and exciting dimension that you're creating. Well, I didn't do anything. I'm just a <laughs> conduit interviewer, but I believe in it. And I know these CEOs, I know their hearts, mm -hmm. I know the team, I know their hearts. And the well, you're part of it, so, you know. <laughs> thank you. Well, listen, the fact that they've created a safe space for artists to create, to make money finally for their art. I yes. just tried to do that as well with these interviews, you know, to be able to get to meet you, Miriam, in London. You are such an incredible soul that... I would not have been able to meet so otherwise. Kind. So kind, well, same to you. You have such a beautiful sparkle of magic and wonder in you. And that like naughty naughtiness and very sweet and generous. You're yeah, really lovely connecting to you. Aww, you too. Thank you.